Okay, shalom everyone and welcome to another Bits of Torah Truths. We are in the Simchat Torah series, the Joy of Torah series. And this week's Torah portion is Parashat Acharimot. And um, I titled the study this week, Our Faith is About Living for the Lord. And So in this week's reading uh, is from Leviticus chapter 16, verse 1 to chapter 18, verse 30. And the Lord spoke to Moshe following the death of Aaron's two sons. And he said that in chapter 16, verse 2, tell your brother Aaron that he should not enter at any time into the holy place inside the veil before the mercy seat which is on the ark, or he will die, for I will appear in the cloud over the mercy seat. Okay, so according to the scriptures, Aaron was given the high priesthood, which required of him certain things, such as not touching the dead. And in Leviticus chapter 16, verse 2, the Lord tells Aaron that he is not to go into the holiest place at any time he chooses, or he might die. And so thinking on these things, our being called in the Messiah, Yeshua, the Lord also requires something of us as well. And just as Aaron was required to live in a certain way, we too are also called to live in a certain way. And so, have you ever been told that there is no requirement on you, but just believe in Jesus? Have you ever been told that? And the question is, that we have to ask, is is the work of the Messiah effective if we are not striving to live for him? What do you think? You know, so, I thought we would explore this topic a little bit further. And the scripture verses that we are looking at today, or tonight, is from Leviticus chapter 18, verses 1 through 5, there on the first page, and that says the following. It says, Then the Lord spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to the sons of Israel, and say to them, I am the Lord your God. You shall not do what is done in the land of Egypt, where you lived, nor are you to do what was done in the land of Canaan, where I am bringing you. You shall not walk in their statutes. You are to perform my judgments and keep my statutes, to live in in accord with them. I am the Lord your God, so you shall keep my statutes and my judgments by which a man may live if he does them. I am the Lord. Okay, so the scriptures for this week from Leviticus 18 verses 1 to 5, through 5, the Lord speaks to his people exhorting them to not do what is done in the land of Mitzrayim, in the land of their bondage. And the Lord is calling his people to not act and behave as the world does. And the context shows the Lord wanting his people to live and to walk according to his commandments and statutes. You know, note that his commandments and statutes aren't tied specifically to a people because they are his. They're, they're tied to his people. You know, so there is one Torah for all people. And much later in Israel's history, however, we learn that the people did not continue in God's ways, which is indicated according to the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 3, verses 8 through 11. And that says the following. You find that on page 2 of the study. It says, For Jerusalem was stumbled and Judah has fallen, because their speech and their actions are against the Lord, to rebel against his glorious presence. The expression of their faces bear witness against them, and they display their sin like Sodom. They do not even conceal it. Woe to them, for they have brought evil on themselves. Say to the righteous that I, it will go well with them, for they will eat the fruit of their actions. Woe to the wicked. It will go badly with him, for what he deserves will be done to him. Okay, so notice how Isaiah speaks of the people's speech, and he's speaking, and if we look at the Hebrew text, it uses the word Lashonam, meaning, um, you know, referring to their tongue, you know, and there, then it, Isaiah also refers to their actions and the way that they walk, that's standing, all of which, which is standing in opposition to the Lord, and this suggests that the way one speaks follows through by the way one walks. A man's deeds proceed from what is in his heart. And remember in Parashat Kitisa, the children of Israel had Aaron build them a golden calf, 
whereby the words of their lips indicated their desire and plan to walk in sin before the Lord at the mountain of Sinai in the desert. In addition, King David said in Psalm 39 verse 1, he says, I said, I will guard my ways that I may not sin with my tongue. I will guard my mouth as with a muzzle, while the wicked are in my presence. So here, David says that I will guard or keep my ways. He will take hold of or keep Shomer, his ways, so that he does not sin with his tongue. Sin has a capacity or capability to cause one to lie and to deceive. And this could be the matter in which David is asking the Lord for help to him to guard against sin. In addition, Solomon said in Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verses 1-7, through seven, he said, Guard your steps as you go to the house of God, and draw near to listen rather than, rather than to offer the sacrifice of fools. For they do not know they are doing evil. Do not be hasty in word or impulsive in thought to bring up a matter in the presence of God. For God is in heaven and you are on earth. Therefore let your words be few, for the dream comes through much effort, and the voice of a fool through many words. When you make a vow to God, do not be late in paying it, for he takes no delight in fools. Pay what you vow. It is better that you should not vow than that you should vow and not pay. Do not let your speech cause you to sin, and do not stay in the presence of the messenger of God. Do not say in the presence of a messenger of God that it was a mistake. Why should God be angry on account of your voice and destroy the work of your hands? For in many dreams and in many words there is emptiness. Rather, fear God. Okay, so that was Ecclesiastes 5, verses 1 through 7. So we are told over and over again in the scriptures to take heed of our ways and to examine our ways which is something every man should do in his own life, to examine his actions, his conduct, and his conversation, just as David is suggesting to do in Psalm 39. The Apostle Paul said the same thing in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12, Therefore let him who thinks he stands take heed that he does not fall. The taking heed of one's ways before God, Um, or how does your life measure up to the standard of Scripture? You know, okay, so um, the idea is that by taking heed of our ways before God, we are examining ourselves whether we are obedient to God's Word. How do we measure up to Scripture? Are we measuring up or not? You know, um, and where are we failing? And this is what it means, I believe, to walk by faith, and to repentantly walk in God's ways, in his truth, and not in error, as sin is missing the mark. We are told to walk in the commandments and the ordinances of God blameless. And this is what it means to walk in the path of righteousness and holiness according to the scriptures. The path of holiness and righteousness is the path Yeshua has placed upon us. We are to seek holiness and take heed not to embrace error, whereby all of these things are done with a pure heart and with pure intentions. With these things in mind, Parashat Aharimot may be summarized in the following way. And we can see here on page 4, I summarize there are six things. One, the scriptures say that the life of the blood is in the flesh, and it has been given, the blood has been given to make atonement for our souls. Therefore, no person is to eat the blood of any animal. Two, Israel is not to do what was done in the land of Egypt, nor do what is done in the land of Canaan. 3. The command against incest. 4. The command against homosexuality, which is called an abomination. 5. Intercourse with an animal is prohibited, for these are the things the nations do and are the reason they are being cast out from the land. And then 6. Speaks to not keep any of the abominable customs of the nations. This includes the holy days which are adopted from the nations to be used in service of the Lord God of Israel. And so um, there's a short list of the commands that we're given in Parashat Acharimot. And reading through these commands, the question is, are these commands binding upon us today?
you know, and Christians continue to ask this question about the Torah, and the answer is a most definite yes, you know, but note how each of these commands are given both for the glory of God and also to define the meaning of living a righteous life before God. So do you believe these laws have passed away in Yeshua the Messiah? You know, it's interesting to study Paul's words to the Galatians because it appears he is speaking on this very same set of commands. Most people believe Paul was quoting Yeshua's words when he said, love your neighbor as yourself. However, both Yeshua and Paul quoted from Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18, in Galatians 5:14, to love your neighbor as yourself. In addition to this, Paul may possibly be basing his exhortation to the Galatians out of Parashat Behar in Leviticus 25 to not do wrong to one another versus death and life being in the power of the tongue. In Paul's discussion on the tongue, he speaks of biting and devouring one another. He contrasts the walking in the spirit to the walking in the flesh. He lists the characteristics of those who walk according to the flesh as opposed to, walk, to those who walk according to the spirit. Paul says the deeds of the flesh are immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions, envy, and drunkenness, and carousing, and things like these. That's Galatians 5, 19-21. And then notice how Paul appears to be summarizing the commandments in Levit Leviticus in a very concise manner, whereas the fruit of the Spirit is said to be love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. He says that those who walk in the flesh do not inherit the kingdom of God, and those who walk in the Spirit, against such there is no law. The most interesting aspect of these scriptures is that the one who walks according to the Spirit does not nullify Torah, but upholds the Torah which is the instruction of God in his life. And Paul says that in Romans 3, verse 31. Paul speaks of loving our neighbor and doing no wrong to one another and walking in the Spirit. And it's apparent that walking in the Spirit is synonymous to submitting our lives to the commandments. This is also the meaning of submitting our lives to Yeshua the Messiah and our abiding in him. And this week's Torah portion lists prohibitions that are based on the customs of the nations that we are not to practice these things because we are a holy people that serves and worships a holy God. Solomon says that the sacrifice of fools is offered by those who do not regard their ways. Solomon said in Ecclesiastes 5, 1-7, through it is better to avoid sin than to offer sacrifices, but if offered, they should be pre presented with a repented attitude and not merely as fools offer them for the purpose of complying with the law. This is consistent with with, the, with what the rabbis think, according to the Talmud Bavli in Berachot 23a. And it says the following on page 5 and 6. It says that Rabbi Shemuel Nachmani said that Rabbi Johanan, uh, Jonathan had said, Keep your foot when you go to the house of God. Keep yourself from sin. If sin comes before the sacrifice, then draw near to hear the words of the wise ones, the sages. Rabbah said, Hoi. Draw near to hear the words of the wise. If sinners bring a sacrifice and do teshuvah, a gift of the fool's sacrifice, do not be as fools that sin and bring a sacrifice and do not perform teshuvah, for they know not that they do evil as compared to the righteous. They will be as fools that sin and bring sacrifice, and they will not know what is good. They will come with evil. They come to the Lord not knowing the difference between good and evil. And then... And so the concept here is without teshuvah, repentance, the sacrifice is meaningless. Therefore, can there be salvation in Yeshua the Messiah without teshuvah? And so we, we come back to this idea of like, for example, with the hypergrace movement that you don't you don't have to do anything just believe just believe right well there where where's teshuva where's repentance where's turning from sin where is all that you know we're, we're, why aren't you talking about that right and the idea from the talmud is that the fool brings a sacrifice by route 
okay, and just to fulfill the mitzvah of the sacrifice and does so without a pure and repentant heart. And so is it possible to do that today in faith that we have in Messiah, in the Messiah Yeshua, you know? And in the previous Torah portion, we're told to make a distinction between the clean and the unclean, and we are not to make ourselves detestable by being disobedient because the Lord God has separated us from the unclean thing. This is illustrated in the Torah, which states in Leviticus chapter 20, verse 25 to 26, You are therefore to make a distinction between the clean animal and the unclean, and between the unclean bird and the clean, and you shall not make yourselves detestable by animal or by bird or by anything that creeps on the ground, which I have separated for you as unclean. Thus you are to be holy for me, for I, the Lord, am holy. I have set you apart from the peoples to be mine. And so what's interesting is that in this command on the clean and unclean food, God says that he is commanding us for the purpose of setting us apart from the world, from the peoples, to be his. And so this, the clean and unclean foods is a, a distinction and a mark of God's people that he has separated unto himself. And um, we are called to do that. And all of these commands were given us to warn us to watch carefully what we do so that we do not defile ourselves and become detestable in the eyes of the Lord. Does believing in Yeshua the Messiah, therefore, opt us out of the capacity of becoming detestable in God's eyes? What do you think? And based upon some preachers I've heard, it's believed that faith in Yeshua does that very thing. That it doesn't matter what you do, just believe in Jesus. You know, And the scriptures say in Leviticus 20 verse 26, Thus you are to be holy to me, for I the Lord am holy, and I have set you apart from the peoples to be mine. And the Apostle Peter repeats this in First Peter's First Peter chapter 1, verse 16. Ellie says that all sin, even by believers, is detestable to God. Yeah. And this is what the Lord has done in the issue of the Messiah, that he has made us holy, and therefore we must be very careful to live worthy of the calling that God has placed upon us. As, as Paul said in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1, we should examine our ways and seek to live our lives for the Lord, to watch and to guard ourselves against sin. The point is that we, uh, the point is, you know, and the question is that have we given the Lord all he deserves? And everything of any importance in our lives as believers must boil down to our relationship with our Creator. And yet we have been taught to settle for something less and a little lukewarm. Some people have relegated their walk with God to a little more than a Sunday morning hobby. And have you done this in your life? The scriptures tell us that the Lord God is passionately in love with his people. He has revealed himself to us as father, husband, king, and master, and has called each of us to become a child, a bride, an ambassador, and a servant. Do you meet his level of commitment or expectation? And is your level of commitment to the Lord done in such a way that honors him and proclaims his glory and truth to the world? Or is it simply a matter of how much we can get away with? Or is there just a lack of concern for holiness today? Yeshua's words brings this out in a more personal manner when he speaks of our standing before the judgment seat of God. He says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 to 23, Anyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Or not, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name cast out demons and in your name perform many miracle, miracles? And then I will de declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Now, uh, the Mishnah in Pirkei Avot, chapter 5, verse 19, and chapter 5, verse 20, it speaks about these verses from the Gospel of Matthew and directs our attention to those things that cause one to be labeled as the one who practices lawlessness. In the Mishnah, Pirkei Avot, 519, it says, The one who has these, has these three things is of the students of our father Abraham. 
one who has three other things is of the student of Balaam the wicked. The one who has a good eye, a low spirit, and a humble soul is of the students of our father Abraham. The one who has an evil eye, a haughty spirit, and a broad soul is of the students of Balaam the wicked. What is the difference between the students of our father Abraham and the students of Balaam the wicked? The students of our father Abraham eat in this world and inherit the world to come. As it says, that I may cause those that love me to inherit sub their su to inherit substance and their treasuries I will fill. But the students of Bil Balaam the wicked inherit Gehenna and go down to the pit of destruction, as it says, but you, God, will bring them down into the, pit, into the pit of destruction. Men of blood and deceit will not live out half their days. As for me, I will trust in you. Okay, and then the Mishnah Pirkei Avot, chapter 5, verse 20. Yehuda ben son of um, Temi, Teima says, Be strong like the leopard, light like the eagle, quick like the gazelle, and mighty like the lion to perform the will of your father in heaven. He would say the strong-faced go to Gehenna, and the shame-faced to the Garden of Eden. May it be your will, Hashem, our God, that you build your city speedily in our days and give us our share in your Torah. Okay, so the Mishnah in the Pirkei Avot speaks of the righteous as opposed to the wicked. The righteous have three things, the good eye, the low spirit, and the humble soul. The wicked, on the other hand, have an evil eye, a haughty, a haughty spirit, you know, pride, and a broad soul. The Mishnah in Pirkei Avot 5.20 speaks of God's people requesting him to build his city quickly and to give them their share in his Torah and his instruction. And note the significance of this statement, the Lord building a place to be worshipped and served and giving his instructions. This, these things are indicative of being called a child of God and having a part in his family among his people and to live for him, which results in the Lord God's presence abiding in our midst. The Apostle Paul said in Philippians 1.21, For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Most people seem to focus on the second part of the verse, to die is gain, and contemplate the joys of heaven, but overlook what it means to live as the Messiah lived. The importance of the phrase to live as Christ cannot be under, overstated, and this is the point our Father in heaven giving his Torah, so that we can live in the fullness of the, what the Lord has for us, in the blessings of this world, in the joy of fellowship with our Father in heaven, and with the expectation of the world to come. The phrase, to live is Christ, means that we imitate the example of Yeshua. Everything that Yeshua did and said is what Paul wanted to do and say. And so the question is, do you feel the same way about your relationship with the Lord? To live as Christ means that we speak of Yeshua the Messiah to all peoples, to all nations, that we pursue the knowledge of the Messiah in his Torah, which is to learn more about him and his ways. Studying the Torah, just as Paul said in Philippians 3, verses 10 through 11, I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. Therefore, to live is Christ means that we are willing to give up everything to serve him, even down to the little things in our lives, such as what we eat. When we make the Messiah our focus, our goal, and our chief desire, we will have a mind, a heart, a body, and a soul that is centered upon Him. A love for God, our Father in Heaven, and a desire to serve the Lord according to His commandments. And this is exactly what Yeshua said in John chapter 10 and 14. As we run the race marked out for us, we laid aside the entangling sin in the worldly distractions and fix our eyes upon Yeshua, and occupy ourselves in the manner we should be occupying ourselves. And this is exactly what the rabbis taught and believed when they wrote in the Mishnah Pirkei Avot, chapter 2, verse 2. It says, Rabban Gamliel, the son of Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi, said, Excellent is the study of the Torah, together with a worldly occupation. For the exhortation expended in both of them causes sin to be forgotten. 
in all study of the Torah in the absence of a worldly occupation comes to nothing in the end and leads to sin. And all who work for the community, let them work for the sake of the name of heaven. For the merit of the community's ancestors sustains them, and their ancestors' righteousness will endure forever. As for you who work for the community, God says, I credit you with a great reward, as if you yourselves have actually done everything on your own. Okay, so that, that was the Mishnah Pirkei Avot, chapter 2, verse 2. And so this is the meaning of Paul's words to the Ephesians in chapter 4, verse 1. It says, Therefore I, the prisoner of the Lord, implore you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which you have been called. The, rabbi, the rabbis speak of studying God's word and working. And this is not about simply going to work each day, but to work for the sake of Hashem in heaven which is related to our daily service to the Lord, to remember Him and to speak of Him to others each day. The rabbis in the Mishnah speak of the merit of the righteousness of our ancestors. The point is to live in a worthy manner so as not to profane the name of the Lord in heaven or the names of those who went before us in the righteousness of God. Our striving for the Lord's help to do what is right, to live in righteousness, holiness, and justice and truth, coupled to God's mercy in the Messiah Yeshua, is what keeps us from being destroyed. The Mishnah says that God said that I credit you with a great reward as if you yourselves have actually done everything on your own. And so the rabbis admit that the Lord, that the Lord mercifully works in our lives to empower us to live for Him. And so in the Torah portion of this week, we are called to not do what the nations have done in serving their gods. The Lord is speaking of the kind of attitude that we should have with regard to our service and worship of Him. Our attitude is very a very important aspect of living by faith in Yeshua the Messiah. Though we sin, we are striving to turn from our sins and to walk in the light. As John wrote in 1 John chapter 1, Seeking our Father in heaven in the name of Yeshua the Messiah by the power of His Spirit for the glory of God. Amen. So um, that concludes the Torah portion of this week. And uh, does anyone have any comments? Um, I'll release the mic here for a second.